page 466 continued the dawn of independence the post-independence novel has shown signs of maturity from the viewpoint of technique style and language the advance in fictional technique is a landmark in the history of indian english novel it has emerged in the words of dr k r s Iyengar as quote a living and evolving genre, comma, and is trying in the hands of its practitioners a fusion of form, comma, substance and expression that is recognizably Indian, comma, yet also bearing the marks of universality, unquote, stop. The Indian English novelist depicted the real picture of India before the West and dispel the false impression about India as a country of superstitious superstitions and jugglers, of astrologers and bejeweled Maharajas and Maharanis, which Kipling and some other had created. Mulkraj Anand, 1905-2004, a prolific writer and short story writer, emerges as a social realist and reformer, humanist and visionary in his novels, Untouchable, 1935, Cooley, 1936, Two Leaves and a Bud, 1937, The Village, 1939, Across the Black Waters, 1947, The Sword and the Sickle, 1942, The Big Heart, 1945, the Private Life of an Indian Prince, 1953. The Old Woman and the Cow, 1960. The Ra Road, 1963. The Death of a Hero, 1964. Seven Summers, Morning Face, 1970. The Confession of a Lover, 1976. And The Bubble. He also brought out seven collections of short stories, The Child and Other Stories, 1934, The Barber's Trade Union and Other Stories, 1944, Reflections on the Golden Bed and Other Stories, 1953, The Power of Darkness and Other Stories, 1959, Large Vanti and Other Stories, 1966, and Between Tears and Laughter, 1973. Para. Anand is the harbinger of social change, and he has exposed with frankness the shams and hypocrisy underlying the polished veneer of social life, with Dickensian peccancy of realism. In Untouchable, Cooley, The Road, Two Leaves and a Bud, and The Big Heart, he emerges as the champion of the underdog and a crusader against social distinctions and man-made barriers which divide humanity. Para. The Village Trilogy, consisting of The Village Across the Black Water and The Sword and The Sickle, deals with the theme of the disintegration of village community. Gauri ru ruthlessly exposes the exploitation of women. Education, which is the backbone of culture and national progress, has been dealt with in Morning Face, The Village and the Road, and Lament on the Death of a Master of Arts, is a quote dig at modern education which dot 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 leaves man a misfit unquote stop the sword and the sickle private life of an indian prince and death of a hero deal with political theme seven summers morning face confession of a lover and the bubble are autobiographical novels para Anand's fictional craftsmanship is superb. Plot, characters, setting, style and language in his novels function together to reveal his vision of man and society. 
all his novels are born of the union of experience and imagination. Anand did his best to domesticate or Indianize English. His fictional technique communicates his vision of life. He does not stick to any particular form. He adopts the epical, dramatic or epistology or picturesque form as the subject demands. Para. Both as a humanist, realist and as a pioneer of nativization technique, Anand would enjoy an unassailable place and would continue to inspire and influence the future generation of Indian English novelists. Para. R.K. Narayan, the pioneer of regional novel, has written the autobiographical novel in his trilogy, Swami and Friends, 1935, The Bachelor of Arts, 1936, and The English Teacher. His other Malgudi novels are The Dark Room, 1938, Mr. Sampath, 1952, The Financial Expert, 1955, the Guide, 1958, Waiting for the Matma, The Vendor of Sweets, 1967, The Painter of Science, 1977, A Tiger for Malgudi, 1983, and The World of Nagraj, 1990, page 467. His collections of short stories are Malgudi Days, Dodu and other stories, Cyclone and other stories, and an astrologer's day. Para. Narayan is the character of regional novel in Indian English literature. The imaginative region of Malgudi, quote, is the domain of Narayan's imagination stop. There is no such town in any direct tree, comma, almanac, comma, or at last of the subcontinent, unquote, stop. It leaves in his imagination. Scott created the Waverley. Wordsworth immortalized the Lake District in his poetry. Hardy's Wessex is a district more real than the present districts of England, and Arnold Bennett's Pottery Town have their own individuality. In the same way, Narayan's Malgudi quote is a reality charged with all that is intimate and poignant in human life. Stop. He has created a delightful world of men and women, of life and manners within the restricted locale of Malgudi. Unquote. Stop. Para. Narayan's characters are the true children of Malgudi. His characters reveal a definite journey of the self from innocence to experience and finally to wisdom. His characters realize the reality of things, comma, quote, through frequent rise and fall they move until their experiences culminate in wisdom, stop. After many adventures and misadventures in life, the characters return to the old pervasive reality of Malgudi, sadder and somber stop. And during this journey, Narayan observes the vast spectrum of life, unquote, stop, para. Narayan's characters and plots are inseparably knit together. His characters are drawn with remarkable economy and delicacy, para. Narayan's novels reveal his comic vision of life through irony and paradox, his style embodies his vision of life, the typical life of Malgudi in an extraordinarily simple and unpretentious language with no streaming after effects. His command over language is remarkable and he used it as the medium of storytelling in a simple, lucid and unaffected manner. The Times literary supplement alludes to integral cohesiveness in Narayan's style, Cologne, quote, His humor is woven into the texture of his prose, stop. It never erupts in a detachable epigram or joke. He did his best to inject the spirit and tempo of Tamilian idiom into English speech in a natural and 
unaffected manner. In spite of raciness and simplicity, Narayan's style is rich in evocativeness and suggestiveness. Para. Raja Rao, the novelist of the Gandhian age, wrote Kantapura, 1938, The Cow of the Barricades, 1947, The Serpent and the Rope, 1960, The Cat and Shakespeare, 1965, Comrade Kirilan, 1976, and The Policeman and the Rose, 1978. He was the winner of the Sahitya Academy Award for The Serpent and Rope. He is one of the recipients named in 1988 for the dollar 25,000 Nansdat International Prize for Literature. He was also awarded the Padma Bhushan for his literary achievements. Para. Rao introduced the elements of an epic breadth of fiction, a metaphysical rigor, a philosophical depth and a symbolical richness in Indian English novel. He has produced a truly Indian species of novel. To achieve his end, he has been variously influenced. He has learned the art of narration from Joyce, Conrad, Valmiki and Veda Vyas. He subtly weaves Indian sensibility, tradition, myth, mysticism, religion and narrative technique in the themes of his novel. Para. Rao is very successful in depicting characters. Though his characters are mostly simple, straightforward, unsophisticated village folks, he has invested them with a poetic and dreamlike quality and symbolic significance. They are equally significant as individuals and possess their peculiar characteristics and idiosyncrasies. They are living men and women and not mere symbols. Para. Rao's main aim as a novelist is to reveal and interpret Indian sensibility through plot, characterization, atmosphere and setting, style and language in his novels. In Kantapura court is a distinctive Indian sensibility, comma, to be precise, comma, expressed in English language, stop. The words are English, comma, but the organization is Indian and the novelist has to organize himself, unquote, stop, para. Rao has created a style which reflects the rhythm and sensibilities of Indian psyche as, quote, since it is in Sanskrit that the Indian mind has found its most consummate linguistic expression, he has tried to adapt his English to the movement of Sanskrit sentences, unquote, stop, para. Despite his small output, Raja Rao, in the words of M. K. Naik, quote, the, modern, the most Indian of Indian English novelists, comma, as probably the finest painter of East-West confrontation, comma, as symbolist, comma, stylist and philosophical novelist, comma, and as an original voice in modern fiction, comma, undoubtedly remains secure, unquote, stop. He is, in the words of C. D. Nasimaya, quote, the most significant writer in English, comma, and a major novelist of our age, unquote, stop, para. G. V. Desai is all about Mr. Hattera, H-E-T-T-E-R-E-R, -E -E is a comic novel. It is a complex novel combining a variety of themes, East-West encounter, search of identity in the midst of national and cultural restlessness, page 468. Sense and nonsense, humor and irony, lofty wisdom and sheer buffoonery, Fantasy and realism, comedy and tragedy, pathos and bathos are packed together in this novel. According to H. M. Williams, it is a typical Indian novel which brings to exposure, quote, Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Buddhist, Jain, Christian India, which 
had been occupied by the foreign Mughals and then until 1947 by the foreign British, unquote, stop. It describes various incidents and experiences in the life of Hindustan Wallas, Hatteras, whose father was a European and whose mother was a Malia, Malay Peninsula resident lady. His name suggests his mixed parentage, confused identity and splintered personality. Para This novel abounds in puns which are the chief source of humour. It is structurally patterned on the Panchatantra, which employs the device of chain story throughout. All About Mr. Hatterer is a synthesis of Eastern and Western narrative techniques. Its place in the history of Indian English novels is unique. Para Bhavani Bhattacharya contributed six novels, So Many Hang- Hungers, 1947, Music for Mohini, 1952, He Who Rides a Tiger, 1954, a Goddess Named Gold, 1960, Shadow from Ladakh, 1967, and A Dream in Hawaii, 1975. His works include translation of Tagore, entitled The Golden Boat and Towards Universal Man, Gandhi, The Writer, Cavalcade, 1948, and Steel Hawk, a collection of short stories which deal with social reality and psychological interest. He was awarded the Sahitya Academy Award for 1967 for his famous novel, Shadow from Ladakh. All his novels have a social purpose. From the viewpoint of technique, his novels, quote, are replete with quick narration, comma, clear insight, comma, interlaced with a racy style, stop. He was quick to grasp the meaning and matrix of movements in society and document them in his novels. But Acharya's novels have a social purpose and according to T. Narayana, quote, a study of his novels reveals that he was one of the bravest social critics, comma, exposing both hypocrisy and helplessness of people in a crisis, dot, dot, dot. He did yeoman service to Indian English fiction in terms of transmuting native Indian into English, dot, 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 unquote, para. Kushwan Singh, a distinguished journalist, has been the editor of Yojana, 1951-53, the Illustrated Weekly of India, 1969-79, the National Herald, 1978-79, New Delhi, 1979-80, and the Hindustan Times, 1980-83. He has published four novels, Train to Pakistan, 1956, I Shall Not Hear, The Nightingale, 1959, Delhi, 1989, and The Company of Women, 2000. Two collections of short stories, The Mark of Vishnu, 1950, and A Bribe for the Sahib, 1967, and many translations into English. He won the Grove Press Award for Train to Pakistan. He was awarded the Padma Bhushan in 1974, which he returned in 1984 in protest against the Union government's siege of the Golden Temple, Amritsar. Para Singh's first novel, Train to Pakistan, is conspicuous for the frank realism of description of the ghastliness and callous brutality of the partition of India. It is set in an imaginary village called Mauno Majaria, M-A-O-N-O-M-A-J-R-I-A, situated on the newly drawn India-Pakistan border in 1947. It is a realistic masterpiece which contains, quote, a well-thought-out structure, comma, an artistically conceived plot, comma, an absorbing narrative and imaginatively realized characters, stop. In I Shall Not Hear the Nightingale, 
Singh describes the life of a Sikh family in pre-independence days with care and sympathy. Delhi and the company of women expose the shameless world of sex and lust. It is a loveless, mindless, soulless, dehuman, human, de human, humanated, d e h u m i n a t d world of shameless sexuality, lustfulness, lewdness, and adultery. His obsession with sex in Delhi and the company of women leaves a bad taste in the mouth. Para. Manohar Malgonkar, comma, quote, a born storyteller, comma, worked in the Indian Army during the Second World War and reached the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. His army experiences are recorded in his first novel, Distant Drum, 1960. His other novels are Combat of Shadows, 1962, The Princess, 1963, A Bend in the Ganges, 1964, Spy in Amber, 1971, The Devil's Wind, 1972, Shalimar, 1978, and two collections of short stories entitled Bombay Beware and A Toast in Warm Wine. His novels are remarkable for thematic variety, military life, the life of princes, the communal frenzy during the partition of the country and the mutiny of 1857. Malgoka's Rust, a printing mistake, it should be last five novels, have a sound historical sense. <coughs> Spy in the Amber is a thriller after the manner of iron flaming. Para. Chaman Nahal's works include My True Faces, 1973, Azadi, 1975, Into Another Dawn, 1977, The English Queen, 1979, The Crown and the Loincloth, 1981, and a collection of short stories, the Weird Dance, 1965. Nahal is gifted craftsman. His prominent themes are broken marriage, in my true faces, east-west encounter and tradition versus modernity. In Into Another Dawn, page 469, The Partition of India in Azadi and the Gandhian Age in the Crown and Loincloth. The English Queen is remarkable for technical excellence. It is racily and vigorously told by the omniscient narrator. The technique is, quote, close to that of oral tradition, the didactic purpose, the dis directness of address to the reader, the entertaining, engaging manner, the absence of character development, the emphasis upon plot, the episodic mode of narration, unquote, stop. Para, Arun Joshi, 1939 to 2003, a writer by choice, a management consultant by training and profession, has written The Foreigner, 1971, The Strange Case of Billy Biswas, 1971, The Apprentice, 1974, and The Last Labyrinth, 1981. His novels have an existential flavor as he was influenced by Camus, Sartre, and Kierkegaard. He was also influenced by the Gita and Mahatma Gandhi. Joshi's novels present an existential vision of life, which, in the words of Opi Bhatnagar, Kama quote, is more emphatically concerned with the search for the essence of human living and the need for the acculturation of man to establish him back to his roots, comma, self and peace, unquote, stop. What distinguishes his novels is the evolution of a flawless technique which reveals his de novo vision with immaculate artistic excellence. 
Indeed, Joshi's technique of quote, self-introspection intensified by self-mockery opens a new dimension in the art of Indo-English fiction, unquote, stop. Joshi, an outstanding novelist of human predicament, has brought out in his novels the inner crisis of modern man. His protagonists are alienated from the sinister, materialistic world around them and they try to work out their destiny in their own way. Para. Salman Rushdie, one of the most controversial novelists in contemporary literature, is a writer of global fame. The content of his novels is realistic and is based mainly on contemporary history. But Rushdie has the unique knack of creating historical fantasy, combining both realism and romance. As a creator of historical comic epics in Indian English novels, Rushdie is unrivaled. Grimeves, 1975, allegorizes the court politics unquote, of Western powers. Midnight's Children, 1981, deals with distorted politics of Eastern Hindu India, and Shame, 1983, traumatizes military politics of the divided Muslim India. Thus, these three novels form a secular political trilogy. Midnight's Children deals with the vivisection of political secularism and may be termed a historical political fantasy about the Indian subcontinent. It is a prose epic which spans six decades and almost three generations of India's pre- and post-colonial 20th century history, which according to T. N. Dhar, is described through the quote, technique of montage, comma, dates and events are closeted together with happenings in the life of Salim, unquote, stop. Shame is about Pakistan. Printing mistake. Same is about Pakistan. Rushdi himself said, Cologne quote, dot, 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 while Midnight's Children is a novel of quote, memory, unquote, comma, shame is a novel about truth, unquote, stop. It is a political novel about the creation of Pakistan, which was unreal before August 15, 1947. After its creation, an effort was made to wipe out its past history and to rewrite it. Rushdi describes Pakistan as, quote, a failure of dreaming mind, unquote, stop. In it, he exposes the dictatorship syndrome with the fictional technique of caricature and irony. Para. Rushdie's The Satanic Verses, published September 22, 1988, was nominated for the Booker Prize. It is considered to be one of the most controversial books in modern literature. It has been alleged that it contains passages and descriptions which hurt the feelings of the followers of Islam, and hence the government of Iran had passed the sentence of death on Rushdie, which was lifted after many years when he tendered an unconditional apology to the Muslim world. It has been banned in a number of countries, including India. The great literary celebrities like Tom Stoppard, the playwright, Kingsley Amis, the novelist, the renowned poets Stephen Spender and Philip Spender have condemned the ban on the satanic verses, which is written in Rushdie's famous style of magic realism. It is one of the most misinterpreted and misunderstood books. Para. Rushdie is a versatile writer who has written both fiction and non-fiction. His other works are Harun and the Sea of Stories, 1990, In Good Faith, 1990, Imaginary Homelands, Essays and Criticism, 1981-1991, to published 1991, East-West, 1994, The Moor's Last Sigh, 1995, 
The Ground Beneath Her Feet, 1999, Fury, 2001, Step Across This Line, Collected Nonfiction, 2002, and Shalimar the Clown, 2005. Harun and the Sea of Stories contains, quote, the coalescing in the guise of a narrative for children, comma, the debates about the freedom of expression and the liberty of the artistic imagination, comma, a reworking of old stories into new and the status of popular culture, unquote, stop. It may be metafiction seen in all his works, Shalimar, the clown, is a novel on the subject of Kashmir, an earthly paradise lost to religious extremism. He explores the origin of the conflict in the region, page 470, para. Rushdi is a great craftsman noted for originality in fictional technique. He has created a new show by, quote, mixing free light fairy tale with savage political indictment." Unquote. His stylistic and linguistic experiments also reveal his originality as a novelist. Para, Vikram Seth is a prolific novelist of global status. Seth wrote From Heaven's Lake, a travel book about China, two collections of poems, The Humble Administrator's Garden and All You who sleep tonight, and two fables, beastly tales from here and there, and Arion and the Dolphin. The Golden Gate 1986 is a novel in verse consisting of 596 sonnets. He was inspired to use the poetic form for novel by Alexander Rushkin's masterpiece, Eugene Onegin, 1831 which is skillfully written in the poetic form. It has been admired as a great masterpiece. Gori Vidal called it as the, quote, great California novel, unquote, comma, peopled by unmistakably Californian people. It is divided into 13 parts which thematically depict alienation and isolation that characterize contemporary life life of yuppies, a succession of romantic relationships, including a homosexual one, anti-war demonstrations, hobbies, wine-making and pet iguanas. It is a unique artistic feat which is infused with charm, elegance, wits, effortless fluency and effortless fluency and flawless mastery over language. A Suitable Boy, 1994, is Seth's magnum opus. Two Lives, 2005, a biography of Seth's maternal great-uncle, known as Shanti Uncle, and his wife, Henry, is a bestseller. Para. Sudhindranath Ghosh, 1899-1965, in his novels, and Gazelle's Leaping, 1949, Cradle of the Clouds, 1951, The Vermilion Boat, 1953, and The Flame of the Forest reveals Indian sensibility and ethos in typical Indian mode of narration. Manoj Das was influenced by the locale of Orissa in his short stories collected in short stories of Manoj Das, the Crocodile's Lady, Winter's Tale 18, Fables and Fantasies of Adults, and The Submerged Valley and other stories. He successfully expresses Indian ethos in a befitting manner. Balchandra Rajan's two novels, The Dark Dancer, 1959, and Too Long in the West, 1961, are concerned with the crisis of identity and the quest for roots. Vasant A. Sahane's novel, Prajapati, God of People, 1984, presents cultural, social and political problem in contemporary India. B. S. Gidwani's The Sword of Tipu Sultan, 1976, is a memorable contribution to the writing of historical novel. 
Shiva K. Kumar, the renowned poet and critic, has also written Bones Pray Prayer, 1979, and Nude Before God, 1989. Both these novels are academic novels. Para. Upamanyu Chatterjee, an IS officer, in his famous novel English August, an Indian story, 1988, expresses, quote, through a mixture of wit, comma, sharp observation and refreshingly unusual language dash, a fundamentally anarchic iconoclasm, unquote, stop. He exposes the moribund culture of Babudam in this novel. Chatterjee's second novel, The Memories of the Welfare State, is a sequel to English August. It exposes the hollowness of the welfare state, quote, which is managed by political dynasty and serviced by a sovereign state within the state of civil servants, comma, stop. No unquote sign. Amitav Ghosh's The Circle of Reason and an Antic Land are memorable both from the viewpoint of theme and technique. Alan Seeley's The Trotternama Hero and the Brain Fever Bird, 2003, are novels of great literary significance. Weight loss in his latest novel. Weight loss is his latest novel. Para. Some famous novels of 80s and 90s of the 20th century are B. I. Vohora's Rebels of the Valley, 1987, an historical novel. V. N. Arora's Sons and Lovers, an autobiographical novel. Ranga Rao's Foul Filler, F I L E H E R, 1987, a memorable satire. Raj Gill's Ripples, 1991, and Balraj Khanna's Nation of Fools, 1984, and Sweet Chilies, 1991. Rohit Manchanda's first novel, The Light of the Black Sun, 1997, won the prestigious Betty Trask Award. It is an episode no episodic novel which exposes the colonial mindset of English-speaking people. P. V. Nasimarao, the former Prime Minister of India, published his famous autobiogra autobiographical novel, the Insider in 1998. Anand, the protagonist, is the writer's alter ego. It is neither a regular autobiography nor, quote, entirely a work of fiction, unquote, stop. It meshes historical reality with the lives of characters who are both, quote, fictional and semi-fictional, unquote, stop. The insider tells the truth of the writer who has been in the thick of politics for about half a century. The truth has been fictionalized. Para. The first five years of the 21st century have seen the emergence of many talented and promising novelists. David Davidas, The House of Blue Mangoes, 2002, a novel of epic dimension, spans three generations and a pretty long span of Indian history from the fag end of the 19th century to independence in 1947. He has created a fictional region, Chevathar, where are abundant groves of Chevathar Neelam, the blue mango, page 471. It stands comparison with Narayan's Malgudi, Devidar has created a fictional world both compelling and complete. Paiko Ayer, novelist, wanderer, essayist and journalist, has written Video Night in Kathmandu. The Global Soul and his latest novel, Abandoned 2002. He is a famous columnist and writer for Time magazine, Harper's The New York Times and Condi Nast Traveller. The Lady and the Monk, 1991, is his memoir about Japan and Zen Buddhism. Shopping Malls and the Search for Homes appeared in 2000. In his finest work, Ayer explores abandonment, Sufism and Rumi, 
It is an expression of mystical romance. Para. Amitav Ghosh, a print journalist with the Indian Express, during the emergency observed minutely the changing political and social conditions in India. His first novel, The Circle of Reason, 1982, tramples the ground from an obscure village in Bengal to Mediterranean ports and texts in its sweep, electric idea, ideas and cultures. His remarkable, he is remarkable for fine craftsmanship, refined and chaste language. His second novel, The Shadow Lines, 1986, focuses on a narrator's family in Kolkata and Dhaka and their connection with an English family in London. He won the Sahitya Academy Award for it. Ghosh's third novel, The Calcutta Chromosome, is an attempt into the genre of science fiction. He won Arthur C. Clarke Award, Britain's top science prize for it. His next novel, In an Antic Land, 1992, is an anthropological historical inquiry by a novelist with abundant imagination. Alan Seeley's The Trotter Nama Hero and his latest novel, The Brain Fever Bird, are of great significance. Sanjay Nigam's The Transplanted Man, 2002, expresses the sad predicament of immigrants in USA. Ravi Shankar Ette, E T T E H apostrophe S, The Tiger by the River, also appeared in 2002. Some famous novels which were published in the first five years of the 21st century are Adashir Bakil's One Day 2003, Naftij Sarna's We Were Not Lovers Like That 2003, Hari Kunchru's famous novel Transmission. Vikram Chandra's Red Earth and Pouring Rain, Love and Longing in Bombay, Vikram Kapoor's The Wages of Life, Chetan Bhagat's One Night at the Call Center, and Five Point Someone. Vera. Chetan Bhagat Bhagat was born in New Delhi to a middle-class Punjabi family. His father was in the army and his mother was a government employee in the agricultural department, Para. Bhagat's education was mostly in Delhi. He attended the army public school 1978-1991, Dhaulakua, New Delhi, and then studied mechanical engineering at the Indian Institute of Technology, IIT Delhi, 1991-1995. He graduated from the Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, 1995 to 97, where he was named the best outgoing student. After graduation, he worked as an investment banker in Hong Kong. He had been working in Hong Kong for 11 years before shifting to Mumbai to pursue his passion for writing. He has written four books, all of which are bestsellers. His first three novels were written during his tenure as an investment banker. Para Bhagat is the author of four best-selling novels, Five Point Someone, 2004, One Night at the Call Center, 2005, The Three Mistakes of My Life, 2008, and Two States, 2009. All four books have remained best-sellers since their release, and two have inspired Bollywood films, including the heat film Three Idiots. In 2008, the New York Times called Bhagat, quote, the biggest selling English language novelist in India's history, unquote, stop. Bhagat, a graduate of IIT Delhi and IIM Ahmedabad, is seen more as a youth icon than as an author. Time magazine named him as one of the 100 most influential people in the world. Bhagat also favoured the forming of a system similar to the Lokpal as early as January 2011 through his articles. Para Bhagat writes op-ed columns for English and Hindi newspapers including The Guardian, 
the Times of India and Doinik Bhaskar focusing on youth and issues based on national development. Bhagat is also a motivational speaker and has given talks in leading multinational corporations and other institutions. He quit his international investment banking career in 2009 to devote his entire time to writing. Para Vikram Chandra Chandra was born in New Delhi in 1961. His father, Naveen Chandra, is a retired executive. His mother, Kamna Chandra, has written several Hindi films and plays. Her most notable works include the films Prem Rogue and 1942 A Love Story and Yash Chopra's Chandni. One of his sisters, Tanuja Chandra, is a filmmaker and screenwriter who has directed several films, including Sur and Sanghash. His other sister, Anupama Chopra, is a film critic and consulting editor for India's NDTV. Para Chandra received his high school education at Mayo College in Ajmer, Rajasthan, and attended St. Xavier's College in Mumbai, page 472. As an undergraduate student, he transferred to the United States. He graduated from Pomona College in Claremont, California, with a B.A. Magna Cum Laude in English, concentration in creative writing. Chandra then attended film school at Columbia University, living halfway through to begin work on his first novel. He received his MA from the writing seminars at Johns Hopkins University in 1987. He taught at George Washington University and lectured at University of California, Berkeley. Para. Red Earth and Pouring Rain, Chandra's first novel was inspired by the autobiography of James Skinner, a legendary 19th century Anglo-Indian soldier. The novel was written over several years at the writing programs at Johns Hopkins University and the University of Houston. It was published in 1995 by Penguin Books in India, by Faber and Faber in the UK, and by Little Brown in the United States. Red Earth and Pouring Rain received outstanding critical acclaim, and it won both the Commonwealth Writers' Prize for Best First Book and the David Higam Prize for Fiction. The novel is named after a poem from the Kuruntokai, an anthology of classical Tamil love poems. Para. Love and Longing in Bombay, a collection of short stories, was published in 1997 by the same publishers as Red Earth and Pouring Rain. This collection of stories won the Commonwealth Writers' Prize for Best Book, Eurasia Region, was shortlisted for the Guardian Fiction Prize and was well received by international press and media. Para. In 2000, Vikram served as co-writer with Suketu Mehta for Mission Kashmir, a Bollywood movie directed by his brother-in-law, the award-winning director Vidhu Vinod Chopra and starring Rithik Roshan. Para. Sacred Games, Vikram Chandra's most recent novel, was published in 2008. Set in a sprawling Mumbai, it features Sartaj Singh, a policeman who first appeared in Love and Longing in Bombay. Over 900 pages long, Sacred Games was one of the year's most anticipated new novels and was the subject of a bidding war against, amongst the leading publishers in India, the UK and the USA.